In today's video, I'm going to teach you what a dart is and why we use them. How to mark your dart onto your fabric from a pattern. And finally, how to sew a professional and perfect looking dart. I have my chapters, so feel free to skip ahead to the construction section if you feel more advanced. My name is Elfie Sew and I create sewing tutorials for all levels. Please like and subscribe if you learn from today's content and would like to learn some more. When you take a piece of fabric, you're working with a flat 2D shape and you're applying that to a 3D body. Very simply put, a dart removes a wedge of fabric so that this 2D shape begins to contour and follow the curves of your body. You will find darts typically in the areas where you dip in and out, the breast, the waist, hips and shoulders. Take a look in your wardrobe, examine your clothing and you'll find these hidden within garments that you weren't even aware of. The best way to really understand a dart is to get hands on with some fabric and your body or a dress form if you have one. Take a basic unfitted t-shirt such as a pyjama top and place it on. Now when you wear it you won't really see your body below. It will usually hang straight down from your widest point be that the shoulders or the chest. It may sit again on the stomach or the hip, pooling in depending on your shape and the size of the t-shirt. In most cases, it's hard to see the structure below. Now say we wanted some definition of the body, we want to remove that excess pooling fabric. Pinch it with your fingers, in this example it's the waist. Even without pinning or cleaning up, you can see how the body is now starting to show below the fabric. Place a pin here vertically so it lines up with the body and carry it up and down, pinching out what feels right to you. You can make this as tight or as loose as you want. This is only an experiment. You'll see how you taper off to almost nothing as you reach the peaks and points of your body. Try to work symmetrically with the center line of your body acting as a mirror. Once done, you have draped a custom fit dart. This excess fabric simply would be on the inside of your garment hidden away and you'd be left with a neat seam. A dart will appear like a triangle on a pattern. You have the tip of the triangle here called the dart point and the sides of the triangle are called the dart legs. These legs will go to an edge. Sometimes the internal fabric is removed if it is a particularly wide dart, but this is more about creating a neat finish in the end garment and doesn't change what the dart does or how you construct it. Looking at this bodice pattern, we can see they've got shaping on the underarm and the waist, the back mimicking the waist idea and the shoulder. Even this small dart can have a big effect on fit. There are many ways to transfer pattern markings to fabric and you can use the method you currently do for sewing pattern marks. Use the method you're comfortable with. I'll take you through a couple here to give you options. If you don't need to know this, feel free to skip ahead to the construction phrase below. For a dart, you'll only need to mark the dart tip and the point the dart legs hit the edge. So what you end up with is a dot in the middle of your fabric and then two notches. From that point, you can add in more detailed markings if you want. It depends what you're comfortable with. For all these methods, you will begin by snipping the legs at the edge of your fabric. This is the same as a notch and a small snip of about five millimeters or less. Make sure you stay within your seam allowance. Time, you will be marking two pieces of fabric at once. Here, the front is the left and the back is the right side of the garment. So that is how I will demonstrate. For the first method, we will use a fabric marking tool to mark our point. This could be tailor's chalk, a fabric pencil or heat erasable pen. Always test your marker on a scrap fabrics before using it on your real garment to confirm it erases and leaves no damage. Try to mark the wrong side of the fabric and keep it to a minimum. Notches marked, take a pin and push it through the point of your dart. Go directly downwards and push it all the way till the head touches the fabric. 
make sure you don't stab your fingers on the reverse side. Keeping this secure with your finger, flip your fabric fully over. You can see your pin now pointing upwards. Take your marker of choice and carefully mark where that pin is. Flip the garment back paper side up and remove your pin. Don't remove your paper till all marks are made on one side. Once that is done, unpin your paper a pin at a time, but place your pins back in your fabric to hold it together in place. As you get better, you'll probably be able to get away with less pins, but the more you secure these fabrics from moving, the better results you will get. Flip to your mark side, what was the reverse, and you are now going to repeat the process back Placing your pins now through your marks. It's repetitive, flipping back and forth, but it's accurate and reliable. Whilst learning, you can take a ruler, your fabric marker, and connect the points with a straight line. This will give you a path to follow while sewing. The pen I'm using here disappears with the heat of an iron on most fabrics. It's a great tool to have in your sew kit if you don't already have one. Method 2 is similar to method 1. Start with all your layers pinned to your paper, snip your legs, slide your pin through your fabric at the dart point and flip over. This is where we now differ. Instead of marking this location with a marker, we will use a pin. I like to pick a pin colour for this that stands out against my fabric, typically yellow, and I only use it to mark darts for the whole project. Take the yellow pin and slide it into the fabric so that the yellow head falls at the point. Try to only pin a single layer of fabric. Now, as in the previous method, Return to the paper side, unpin the paper and pin the fabric instead. Flip over and use a pin to push through from the opposite side and then mark this location with yellow pins once again, catching only a single layer of fabric. Alternatively, you can work methodically down, peeling the paper back till you reach a dart point. Then slide a yellow pin in the dart this involves less flipping, less movement, but is much less secure. And if you don't place the pins correctly, it will be less accurate. I only use this when the dart is the very first step I will be sewing on the pattern piece. And I never do this with unstable fabrics with lots of drape and movement. Your pins will fall out and matching them back up after can be hard. For method three, the first steps are the same. Leave your fabric pinned to your pattern from cutting and snip your legs. Now take a hand sewing needle and some contrast thread. I like it double length and don't knot it. As we did with the pin, push the needle through the dart point and leave a tail. Then turn over and push it back almost exactly where it has come out from, but do not pull it all the way through. You want to leave a loop like this. Snip without a knot, leaving a tail, and then repeat for every dart. Now unpin and peel back the paper. Work slowly and be aware of your threads. You don't want to pull them out too, so just hold them with your finger if you need to whilst detaching. When you have the fabric alone, separate the two layers in a similar slow fashion. Be aware of the threads and when you reach them, pull them slowly and snip once you have a decent enough length in the middle. You may want to slide some thread through. This is why I work with two strands, just if I do pull it out, there is hopefully one thread remaining. You will be left with thread sticking up at your dart point on both sides. This is a more secure marking method. Just remember no knots are needed 
these are basting threads that we will need to remove either. If you have an embroidered or fur or sequin fabric, this method is the one you will need. It works on slippery fabrics too. If you need to manipulate and mess with your fabrics for a while, this is also the method you need. Sewing a dart is actually just a straight line going off the edge of your fabric. There are different methods, but this is the one I like. Go and try multiple methods, I encourage it. You'll find styles you like and styles you don't. It's personal choice. Start by taking your fabric at the edge and folding it in half so the right sides of the fabric touch each other. Lay it flat on the table and work slowly, adjusting it a bit like folding the paper just now. You want the two dart legs to align and then the point of the dart, which is the thread, to be located exactly on the folded edge. Once you have that, pin it in place horizontally like this. Again, this is where I would usually use a yellow pin to mark the end of the dart. So later at the machine, I can easily spot where I'm heading to. Our stitch line will be from the notches of the dart legs to the dart point at the thread. As this is an example, I'm going to use a contrast thread so it is visible to you, but you want to use a thread that matches your fabric color or as close as possible. Before you begin at your machine, you need to find out how to reduce your stitch length. Mine is via these up and down buttons here. You can see it goes from 0.5 up to 5, with 2.5 being the regular standard stitch length. Don't worry if you don't have this range, you just need to be able to reduce the stitch length down to your smallest option. We will begin at the standard regular stitch length. At your machine, align the needle with your notch. Lower your presser foot and your needle. Remember your stitch length is your regular stitch now. In my case, 2.5. Back stitch to secure to begin and angle your fabric so it's going to go in a straight line to your dart point or the thread at the edge. Slowly sew towards the point, removing the pins as you go. When you get to about one and a half inches from your dart point, lower your stitch length and continue to sew. At about half an inch, lower it again. And about of a quarter to inch, you want to be at your lowest stitch length. In my case, this is 0.5. By the time you're at the point, you will be sewing almost on the tip of the fold like you are going along the edge. If you have thread traced, pull the threads out now. This is why we didn't knot. Remember the thread position in your head and sew off your fabric at that point. Keep going in thin air for a couple of stitches. Lift your needle and your foot and pull some thread loose. Not a lot, just enough so there is no tension in the thread. Slide back by about a centimetre. Lower your foot and hand lower your needle so it goes into the triangle. This is very important. You don't want to cross the line of stitches you've just made as this would create a visible mark on your garment front. It has to be in the excess triangle we have just made. Keep your stitches short and go horizontal off the side of your fabric. Raise your foot and cut away the threads with a slight tail. You have sewn the dart and secured the end all at the machine. No fiddling, no knots, no hand sewing. It won't come undone in pressing. This is super tight and very neat. Here it is again at a closer angle. Pay attention to how the stitch length reduces as you reach the dart tip. This way of forming a dart by changing the stitch length, securing off with a second row of stitches in the dart triangle is super secure, but that also makes it super hard to unpick. Them tiny stitches on a fabric that is a colour match to your thread are really hard to see. Do a regular long length stitch for 
tiles and if you still need to adjust fit. This is a final step method when you know the fit is right and you will not be unpicking them points. The next important step when it comes to darts is pressing. Place it on your ironing board right side down or you may need to use a pressing ham to find a matching curve. Look at your pattern to see which direction to press the triangle and press it. Push the tip of the iron into the point making sure there is no fold. As a general rule when pressing whilst you sew always have your iron on the lowest setting you can get away with and you only try to touch the material you need to so in this particular example along the dart edges remember if your fabric is delicate use a pressing cloth over the top to prevent it going shiny or creating transfer marks If you have enjoyed watching and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to stay notified of new videos and techniques. Your interaction really helps get my content to other sewers in the community looking to learn. Happy sewing!